is there one particular example that you can provide that shows how subcontractors failed, were failed because of this broken system? Oh, look, there's so many examples. I mean, you just look at any large building company that may have collapsed recently and, uh, you know, you open the paper and you'll read that there'll be millions of dollars out of pocket because what happens, what's happened is that, uh, you know, the project owner has paid the main contractor um, and typically, you know, we're talking many millions of dollars and so then they have not, but the business has collapsed uh, before they've actually passed on those payments to subcontractors or they've used those payments that were intended for subcontractors for the work that the subcontractors have done for something, for something yes. else. Well, and, you know, the most awful stories you hear is that, you know, that, uh, that the money's actually been used to go and buy a Porsche or a boat or some sort of luxury item. So, and, you know, these Ponzi payment sort of schemes in the construction industry, because that is that is what it is. It is kind of using money that is intended to pay subcontractors for another purpose. Uh, and, and that is that's criminal. Yeah. So um, so it is behavior that absolutely needs to be addressed. But to address it, you have to go to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is that there's a working capital gap in the sector. So what that does is that causes this payment dysfunction because so most countries... Can you explain countries, that again? A working capital gap. I thought it was yes. lack of transparency, but what do you mean by that? Well, lack of transparency is how, you know, the parties get away with sort of these Ponzi payment arrangements. But the root of the issue of why they behave this way is that there's this working capital gap. So most countries around the world have outlawed uh, paid when paid provisions. So the, the builder as the main contractor has an obligation to pay their subcontractors, even if they have not yet been paid by the project owner. Um, so a builder can't say to their, their subby, I can't pay you because I haven't been paid yet. That is outlawed. Uh, but the issue is, well, then where does that capital come from for the builder to pay their subcontractors? Because of this insolvency risk in the sector, uh, none of the banks want to finance. So getting access to affordable working capital in the industry is a problem. So to fix that, you have to first address the insolvency payment risk issue. Um, and we do this on project pay uh, to then be able to facilitate that working capital and then provide the transparency in the ledgers to make sure that those payments are flowing in the way that they're meant to.